Hatching is an enterprise on its own in catfish farming, and there are farmers that major basically on hatching. So in case you are interested in hatching, it is a very technical aspect of catfish farming and much knowledge and expertise is required to be able to hatch successfully because it's not like grow out that all you need to do is to change water and feed. There are a lot that needs to be considered when you want to hatch. In this video, I will be practically showing you and extensively how to hatch successfully without having large mortality rate when you hatch because that's the major problem that hatchers face in this business. In case you are seeing me for the first time, my name is John from OXJ. And at OXJ, we have about 300,000 hatching capacity and we utilize about 200,000 in every two weeks in our hatching. If you are new to this channel, do make sure you hit the subscription button and turn on your notification bell as we will be pushing out more educational content and useful content like this on catfish farming on this channel always. In this video, I will be guiding you step by step practically on how to successfully hatch. Meanwhile, the overall process involved in hatching is you basically getting the eggs from the female catfish and getting the mute, which is the sperm sac from the male. Then you use uh, these two components for fertilization and proceeding to the incubation and you successfully hatch. So the first step to hatching is you sourcing a healthy female and inducing that female for ovulation. So this is how it is done. So when you get your quality female bruise dogs, then you do what we call injecting. So injecting helps you to induce that particular female for ovulation. Mind you, what you are trying to do is to get the egg, extract the eggs from this female. And naturally, they won't easily give up their eggs to you. So you do what we call inducing. And what is used for inducing is this. In the natural world, the way it works is when the female is ripe for ovulation, it goes to a part in the river and releases its eggs. Then the male goes there and releases the sperm on it and fertilization happens. So it is the same process we are trying to reciprocate. So there is what is called the pituitary gland on the male's head that has been used to form a substance that we use to induce the ovulation just to make the female honey should i say to be able to release its eggs to you before you can use so that substance the cell in the market we use ovulin there is overprim there are a lot of them and they are basically made from the pituitary glands that is extracted from the head of the male right so how will we inject is this you get your female bruise dogs which is your female fish that you want to use for the hatching and you weigh, you take the particular weight for that female. So when, when you get the particular weight, let's say it is 2 kg, you're going to inject that particular female with this substance that is made from the pituitary gland of the male with half meal, right, of its weight. So if let's say the female is 2 kg, you're going to inject 1 meal of this substance into the female, right, into the female and this will actually help the ovulation after about 10 hours so the substance it could be over prim it could be there are different ones right if you go to any fish store you'll see you can easily ask for over prim so you take half meal of the weight of the fish to inject that particular fish and the way you inject is this there is if you check a matured catfish you're going to see what we call the lateral line so the lateral line is just uh, in between the fish starting from the dozer fin down to the bottom you see the lateral line so close to the head right you can inject there is a muzzle there between the lateral line and the dozer fin there is a muzzle you can inject on that muzzle or you can inject directly on the lateral line if you want to some people don't inject there you can inject directly on the lateral line and when you're injecting don't forget you're injecting half meal of the weight of that particular fish right so immediately you inject your fish you allow it stay for usually we inject at night then we allow it stay overnight right so we allow it stay overnight let's say about 10 to 11 hours but if the weather is a little bit hot it will be about 9 to 10 hours then you will see that they easily give up their eggs for you when you gently press they give their eggs to you easily so that is the first step you start with when you want to hatch number two steps is you extracting the milk from the milk 
that is you extracting the sperm sac from the male so after inducing the female for ovulation like i told you you're going to leave it overnight for about 10 hours to 11 hours when they are ready the next morning then what you do next is to get the male fish so once you get the male fish you can usually we sacrifice the milk for this process right because we're going to tear it open and get the spam sack but if you do not want to sacrifice it we can decide to stick it back after tearing but most of the time we just we just consume it we use it right so after you get the milk you're going to tear it open to check the spam sack which is the milk so once you check usually it has to be very thick milkish color right for you to know that it is very good and healthy so once you extract it from the meal once you tear the meal open and you see that it is good then you can go on you can proceed to extracting the eggs stripping the eggs of the female so the way we strip the egg of the female is by gently pressing the stomach by that time they are already induced so it will easily give up its egg for you so you gently press it if you don't do it with care you're going to injure that fish or you're going to affect the eggs as well by breaking it you're probably going to break it so what you do is to gently press the stomach gently and it will release its egg to you so you can use a bowl to collect the eggs for as many fish you want to use right you can collect the eggs gently pressing the stomach so after collecting the egg make sure throughout this process you do not use water right so just keep water away from this entire process because immediately water touches with the sperm and the egg fertilization starts to happen so you keep water away for now because you're still trying to go through this process and when water touches the, the female egg it closes up the, the nucleus which is supposed to help in the fertilization so you just make sure you keep water away then step four of this process is what we call spawning is you actually bringing what you got from the female and the male together to run this uh, fertilization process so after extracting the eggs carefully you get the milk from the milk which you already tore open you get the milk from it then you're going to use a bleed to tear the milk and extract the sperm out of the sperm sac and you can mix it with a little saline water right and pour it into the egg you can rinse the cup or the bowl usually use a small cup just to contain everything in a small place because it's not usually much and you need it to fertilize your eggs the the female eggs so after getting it right you can raise the cup as well with saline water please don't use normal water it can spoil the whole process so with saline water you raise the cup and you pour it into the whole bowl containing everything then you can gently turn the mixture right so you are advised to use a rubber spoon the reason for this is just so you don't break the eggs when you use an iron spoon you can break the eggs so you're not supposed to and you gently do it you don't do it with force don't spoil the egg because the spoiled egg will eventually spoil the other ones that are good so you gently turn it gently turn it gently turn it to make sure that the spam has reached everything so you can add more saline water and still turn gently turn gently turn gently turn gently and after you are done turning there's what we call cancaban so the cancaban before this time you must have prepared your ponds that you want to use your hatching pond so in the hatching pond you're going to have a net we usually construct we call it cancaban just fill up your tank with water a little bit then the cancaban will be inside and you can place a stone on it also make sure that everything you are using must have been disinfected with salt you wash your pond preparation you're going to wash your pond with salt you watch everything you'll be using with salt to disinfect everything the stones you're going to be using to place on the net you're going to wash it as well thoroughly with salt to make sure you are disinfecting everything right so you can place stones on on the net then you gently lay the eggs on the net so why you lay it on the net is 
when the fertilization eventually happens the fish will swim down through the net under the pond and it's embryo right it remains on top of the net step four is the next day after spawning so after spawning you're going to depending on how favorable the temperature is your hatching room is actually supposed to be hot so if the weather is cold in your area you are advised to turn up maybe charcoal for it just make sure that place is hot it needs a hot environment to hatch successfully so depending on how hot your environment is your hatching can happen faster or it can be delayed right so if the weather is not so good it could take you up to 35 hours before all of it will eventually drop but morning of that next day which is 24 hours you should be seeing them dropping already some of it just when, when i say dropping now hatching successfully some of it will be hatching successfully if you look down the net you see some of the fish under the net already by that time so after that long time so you're going to remove the net from the water and you carefully shake it off in another pond entirely so you just gently shake it off then you gently take that off the next step after you take the nets off is you nurturing them for the first three days for the first three days you're not going to feed them they're going to be feeding on the yolk sac right the yolk sac that remains in the water is what they'll be feeding on for the first three days so you start your feeding after the first three days also throughout this process you'll be running what we call flow through right the flow through is you basically letting the water out and you owning the water in so the water keeps running it keeps running so this you can start the flow through from the afternoon after spawning because immediately they start hashing the bad air will pollute the water so if the water is not constantly flowing it can affect the ones that are hatching and they will eventually die right so you keep on running flow through system for them so after three days you can start feeding them with starter feed so you need to start with starter feed right the starter feed usually you can start with 0.1 or you can start with 0.2 feet and the starter feed is usually highly nutritious the protein content is usually high so you use starter feed to start them up with the first the the first day that you start feeding them so let's say in case you find it difficult to get in 0.1 starter feed you can get 0.2 and further crush it into 0.1 so that it can fit what they need it for further blend it you just can do it so make sure the size of the feed is 0.1 so that they can easily pick it and grow from there and that is the entire process for hatching from selecting a good male brewstock and a female brewstock to injecting the female to extracting the eggs extracting the milk from the male to spawning and eventually incubating so uh, that is the entire process that is involved in hatching if you found this particular video helpful don't forget to hit the like button share and subscribe to our channel as we'll be sharing frequently educational content like this that will help you in your catfish farming uh, on this channel and also if you have any question concerning this process drop your question on the comment section and we'll be very happy and glad to attend to you feel free to reach out